Okay, we're going to return the Board of Education meeting for Wednesday, November 9th, 2022, back to order. Everyone, please silence your electronic devices and we will stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Additions and deletions to the agenda <coughs> since Friday mail. Yes, we do. Business consideration 6.16 will be an agreement with CSEA. 6.17 will be a donation for a little free library house. Personnel consideration 7.30 will be hiring a lifeguard. 7.31 will be the resignation of a custodial grounds person. 7.32 will be a resignation for a teaching assistant. Uh, we'll have some corrections to 8.3 with dates, and 8.4 and 8.5 are just additional information items. Okay. We have a motion for the additions. Mr. Emuel, a second. Mrs. Hotel, are you all in favor? Aye. All right, motion passed. I need a motion for the acceptance of the minutes of the October 19th, 2022 Special Board of Ed meeting. Mr. Beninati. Mr. Ross, all in favor? All right, and we have a special presentation tonight, our external audit, Chris from Marvin and Company, on to the hot seat. <laughs> it's been doing it for so long, it's not even hot anymore, is it? No, it's not, it, it's a little easier. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, I'm Chris Healy. I'm the audit partner at Marvin, Co Marvin and Company that oversees your external audit. Um, so we did wrap up the audit um, last week. And um, so since the, um, the timing of the reports coming out um, for the board meeting, we have finalized the reports um, with you know, very minor changes from the draft that you were provided. Um, we did review the draft reports with the audit committee um, a couple of weeks ago, went through our reports and the financial statements in detail, so um, I'll keep it relatively uh, brief. Um, we did audit the financial statements of the district. Management is responsible for the preparation and fair presentation of the financial statements, including the design and implementation of internal controls. Our um, responsibility as the auditor is to audit the financial statements and express an opinion on the financial statements based on our uh, procedures. And uh, we did issue a unmodified opinion on the financial statements, which is the, the clean opinion that you're looking for. That's the highest level of assurance that we can provide on your financial statements. Um, you did implement two new standards this year that were required to be implemented. Um, that was GASB Statement Number 87 uh, related to leases and GASB Statement 96 related to subscription-based information technology arrangements. And the overall impact on the district was relatively insignificant, um, but it is required to be called out to your attention. Um, we had um, one finding related to noncompliance with the 4% real property tax law cap. Um, you were at about just shy of 12% at 11.98%. Um, that was down from 16.28% in the um, June 30, 2021 year end. Um, so you've taken some steps to uh, reduce that amount in excess of the 4%. Um, and as we discussed at the committee level, you know, the 4%, um, you know, many folks would say is, is insufficient to provide you with, you know, the, the cushion that you need to be able to make changes and have funds available, um, you know, in, in economic um, downturns. So, um, but the district has taken steps to, to reduce that. Um, so that's our one finding. Um, we did also perform a single audit in accordance with the uniform guidance. Uh, because the district expends greater than $750,000 in federal awards, you're required to have that extra um, audit done. And the program that was audited was your education stabilization funds, which encompasses all of those COVID uh, funding streams that you received and expended during the year. Um, and we believe that the district complied with all the relevant compliance uh, requirements of that program um, identified as subject to audit. Um, we really have no other um, significant items to report to you. Um, you know, a big thank you to um, Eileen and Tiffany and Sue and you know Tammy uh, for, and the team for providing us with all of the information that we needed. 
in a timely manner, organized. Um, you know, they really do, you know, make our job, you know, very easy in terms of, um, you know, we're not waiting and, and um, you know, having any difficulties in terms of actually progressing through the audit. They certainly come in and ask for a lot of information, so um, we, we really appreciate their hard work um, and, and getting through the audit. So um, that's really all I have, unless there are any questions. Anybody have any questions? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're good. All right. Well, off thank off. you very much. Thanks, Thanks Chris. Chris. We didn't let them off the hook that easy during no. the audit. We didn't. Really no. We drilled them there. <laughs> okay. Uh, business considerations. Uh, we want to start with the ones we have for roll call, or we want to approve all the other ones besides the roll call? I think you did it first before order. So I'll make all a right. motion for 6 1 through 6 17, leaving out 6 4 and 6 14. Okay. Do we have a second? Mr. Ross, do we have any discussion? Thank you for the money for the, the I don't know, is it for the books or for the little library house? I don't the know. I think it's the house. Okay. Okay. That's, from that's from Trish Grogan. Yeah. From Trish Grogan. Uh, nice, thank you. So we want to thank that. We also want to t uh, thank uh, Price Chopper's Gold Foundation grant mm -hmm. for $500 uh, to support the school community garden. So I believe those are the two donations that we have, so we want to thank both of them. Anything else? Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 We need a motion for 6-4. So moved. A second? Madam Manic. Any discussion? No? Okay. So who's going to do roll call? We Mr. Beninati? Aye. Mr. Deo? Aye. Mr. Angle? Aye. Mrs. Hill Burns. Aye. Mrs. Holtailing. Aye. Mrs. Molina. Aye. Mr. Reveille. Aye. Mr. Ross. Aye. Okay. Motion passes. Thank you. We need a motion for six fourteen. So moved. Okay. We need a second. Mrs. Holtailing. Any discussion? Okay. Let's start with the roll call. We're gonna go backwards. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Ross. Aye. Mr. Reveille. Aye. Mrs. Molina. Aye. Mrs. Hotelling. Aye. Mrs. Hill Burns. Aye. Mr. Angle. Aye. Mr. Deo. Aye. Mr. Bedinati. Aye. <laughs> Make a motion for 7 1 through 7 32. Okay. We have a second. Bedinati. Any discussion? No? All good? All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Motion passed. We want to thank our business administrator. or welcome. Oh, but oh, yeah. I think we scared him off already. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. welcome him to uh, the district. Yeah. He's 7 um, 1. Yeah, you get a picture. I just want to make sure we didn't screw it up. Because <laughs> <laughs> it happens to me all the time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, eight. Uh, is for informational items only. Eight one two eight five. Uh, special reports. Nothing to report. And any other board members have anything they would like to report? exciting to recognize such sacrifice in our community and uh, it, was, it was really very enjoyable. I'm sure you'll have a little bit more detail into it um, and I hope we see more of it in the future. Um, it would be nice if it was actually done maybe at the whole county level where you could see people that came from your community in, in large numbers. So it was great. Good. Thank you. Anyone else? I didn't get to go but I know they had the Green County All County Festival yeah. the weekend. And get to go because my son only told me about it two days before <laughs> like when he was leaving that it was that and I was already booked but the, from what I hear the jazz band was outstanding mm -hmm. was very, I don't know about the rest but I, the jazz band <laughs> which would have been the one I wanted to hear but it was first class. I know yeah. 
That's what I heard, which is unusual too. Usually yeah. they're last, and you have to wait around the whole night to hear them. It's nice to put them first. And they're not allowed to live stream those at yeah. other schools. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. We will turn it over to Dr. Bailey. As Tina had mentioned, we held Operation Graduation this past weekend, and um, the folks from VFW were so uh, good. We had um, we had nine dignitaries speak, um, and I'm with Tina. You know, as as well as uh, recognizing four um, RCS graduates, three posthumously, and and one who was able to be there, Mr. Daytree, um, was very moving. Because uh, of it, and you heard each of those dignitaries, from assembly people to uh, uh, to local dignitaries, and um, uh, recognition of the sacrifice that they made by uh, defending our country. Um, it was great. We spent a lot of time reaching out to our community through various resources, through the paper, um, trying to get more people to to come on board. And I think the last time that we recognized a graduate um, was at a board meeting here, maybe eight years ago, nine years ago when I was still principal. Um, it is very noteworthy um, to do it, so I'm glad we were able to. I found it very moving when they spoke to the students that were in the room too. Mm -hmm. Where you are now in your life, these individuals mm -hmm. were going off to war. Um, and that was, I think, very heavy for people to think about that, that parallel. Yeah. We had uh, members of our team filled with smoke and you know, you're trying to navigate around uh, FBI, um, we had a couple colleges and a recruiter, I think the Marines? Navy, Navy. Uh, but um, as part of our you know, career exploration, our employment, enlistment, and enrollment, um, we need to continue to give our kids exposure um, to uh, these types of opportunities. So we're excited about that. The uh, course guide, I just signed off on our course guide for next year. I talked about some of the, or Fred has talked about some of the pathways and certifications that we've been working toward. Right now we have the seal of validity, which is a graduation credential. And uh, we've just got permission for the business and entrepreneurship CTE pathway credential. Um, and uh, we have a few more brewing. Um, we are either have our applications in for them, including construction two. Do Building, 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 science. building sciences and uh, construction two of the class. Yep. Building sciences, um, civic, human yeah, human services, and the seal of civic readiness. readiness. Yeah. So, uh, but the exciting thing for me is having come from the high school here in, in 2010 to see us taking the work that we're already doing and giving it even more meaning. Kids have always left with content knowledge and skill, but to be able to help them uh, better define their pathways is, is important, especially now. You know, I think things are a little more defined when I graduated uh, from high school, and now there are so many opportunities, but uh, giving them a head start. And even if they don't go into the career that, or the pathway that they've um, decided on in high school, uh, it'll serve them well in no matter what they do, because it teaches them self-regulation, it teaches them application of skills. So. Uh, you'll see in the new course guide, it gets a little more refined every year. And I described to, uh, to Deidre the other day, when I came here, the course guide was 25 stapled pages in black and white with just a list of things that we did. And uh, to look at it now, and it'll be in print probably in two weeks, it, is, it looks like a college catalog. And that tells a story of what we're trying to do for our kids here. I'm very excited about that. So I have a question. I know you bring up the career pathway, and we had this in CNI. So one of the challenges we are going to have is backfilling Mr. Kerrigan. <laughs> so because of he's got certain certifications, right? I can't remember what it was, like he's got a math two or math something special. How do we go about being proactive ahead of time of trying to find a new teacher that's going to be able to backfill him with certifications? Is that something like we can Try to do earlier, or how do how do we that approach that? Time. I guess huh? is that a lot of time. <laughs> well, and, and I think the, <laughs> the second part of that is how do we pivot if we don't fill that hole by the time we need that class? So this year is a perfect example. Um, we have teachers who are uh, some are teaching one out of their certification area uh, in an area where they have some experience or they have some interest. They're teaching one out of their cert, which is allowed, um, and uh, that math position 
is just one. We're going to have a, a short in family and consumer science and in technology because these pathways require more uh, offerings in those areas. So the uh, unquestionably, it'll be an important part of our 23-24 budget process, and as well as, um, as you said, how do we pre-plan? We can uh, give some of our existing staff access to pathways where they can get the training the ahead training. of time or certifications. And some crazy thing about New York State right now, technology, business, facts, and there's a fourth one, are the hardest positions to hire for. But if anyone is in any one of them, they can like take two courses and move into the other one. So basically, if you have a rare bird and you can have them move into a different <laughs> rare bird position, uh, but I will give New York State credit, I think where they've been very static in how uh, our staff are able to get to uh, a final uh, target, they've made it easier in, in, in a few of the pathways, especially those that are harder to find. Um, they've just, um, they became very restrictive around special education as a for instance, where it had to be, you, you were certified in K2, 3-5, K6, 7-12, 7-9. They just reversed and went back to a K-12 certification in special education. Because think about it, you hire a special education, a special education staff member to, to work with a third grade class <clears throat> and the students or the class move into fourth grade and they can no longer teach them is crazy. So that's a, a sign that things are improving. So um, we'll work with staff who we already have to work on those pathways and we're gonna start advertising um, as early as possible with anticipated vacancies. Yeah. I just think you have to be more proactive because we have a lot of really exciting things, new programs, but finding staff to you know, do them is more of a challenge now than ever. No question. Every position and those more than, than others. Sure. Um, so uh, as the guidance counselors, the counselors begin their work with students uh, in the next couple weeks, they'll have that course guide. Um, I shared a discipline report with the board last week, kind of a first draft of a very interactive report around um, the uh, specific, um, I don't like the word offenses, I was gonna say infractions, thank you. Around infractions and uh, the consequences that were yielded from that. It's aggregated data, meaning that it's, um, it's, it's by building, it's by um, uh, gender, it's by, I guess it's aggregated and disaggregated, excuse me. What's gonna say is aggregated is there are no student, student identifiable information. So it's general information, but it can be sorted by uh, gender, ethnicity, socioeconomic status, and building. So you can see trends at different levels where we are. Biggest reason why that's relevant is each one of our buildings has a target right now related to student discipline. And you heard Debbie tonight, she was great about reciting what the targets are for her building and her, her students, what the whole building's working on. Uh, you'll hear, be hearing more about our progress toward those targets over the course of the year. Having data around discipline is a very relevant thing, especially as we're coming um, from these past two years where we know there's a lot of social emotional issues that students have experienced and staff, um, and we're doing things to try and close those gaps uh, but I, I think that we are seeing um, the types of behaviors that we're seeing are different than they were three years ago. Sometimes the magnitude of behaviors is different than they were three years ago. Um, and if we're able, if we're gonna talk about instruction, we obviously need a school climate and an environment where students can do that and they feel safe and confident. Um, so that will be updated uh, at least on a bi-weekly basis and it can also be, uh, that data can be sorted by weeks. So you can do an entire year or you can just choose selected ranges. So um, I think that'll be interesting too because you can see what happens in the first few weeks of school versus what happens around the holidays, which is always a very difficult time. The span of time for our teachers between now and January 1st is gonna be tough um, for a lot of reasons. So Fred, not, does that report take you to the next level where there's interventions offered other than discipline? No, it just talks about the types of infractions and the consequences that are given. Although, you know, the list of, list of consequences goes everything from uh, meeting with a counselor to suspension from school. Mm -hmm. So there's a range, but it certainly it won't be soup to nuts everything that um, could have, would have been used. Yeah, my only thought behind that is obviously the COVID funds we've been given to kind of help close mm -hmm. some of those social emotional gaps and, and interventions. 
at some point will be gone. And if there are relative interventions that were really meaningful, mm -hmm. it'd be great to tie the data to that so that we can make a conscious choice to continue it. Right. So the task for each of our buildings as they're working on their behavioral targets is to do exactly that, is to compare and say, all right, we see that this is a big thing. Um, insubordination is a big thing, or uh, what's that called when you spray paint something? Uh, uh, graffiti. Thank you. Uh, graffiti or damage, property damage is a big thing. What are the interventions we're going to do to do that? Is it through assemblies? Your Debbie talk about assemblies, of, you know, that, that partnered with um, in-class intimate reinforcement of positive behavior is very important. Everybody hears the same message, then it's be able, being able to talk to the kids on a uh, classroom and a personalized level is really relevant. So they'll, they will look at that um, and uh, at from a, both a preventative and a reaction you know, to, to how things are progressing. Um, but that's the kind of stuff that I will want them to share out, especially as we're going through the budget process. We um, approved a referendum um, and bond for the construction project. Uh, January 9th is our target date for the vote. We have a lot to accomplish between now and then. When I say we, I mean we. <laughs> You're good, you, you've done what you need to do. But um, we will uh, be preparing the uh, public relations around it. Um, we're going to, we've been talking about uh, communication with the <coughs> community. We definitely are gonna do some kind of public event so people will be able to come in and watch a live stream of us talking about the project. So. Um, we have a little bit more interaction with our community. We'll be doing uh, a large-scale card that will go home that will describe the, the context of it with really a lot of substance backed up on our website. It's very difficult to send uh, an 8 to 12 page document and have people first get it in the mail right now. As you may know, there are some significant slowdowns in the mail. So we've been talking about how we're going to communicate in the mail. Uh, and we'll use um, all the other typical conduits, including um, Revenue News Herald and, and other ways that we can uh, communicate with our public. Um, we have public notices required to do um, on a set timeline. And um, the, uh, we expect that the PR in the mail to get to households about two weeks prior to the vote. So we're talking about the last weekend in December, last week in December uh, in order to get there. And because we know that mail is sometimes taking up to two weeks. That really puts us in the first few weeks of December to get out of communication. Not a lot of time, as you know. With the holidays. Correct. It'll be going in the mail with 10 million holiday cards just in Ravina um, to get into people's mailboxes. So you'll see more uh, PR uh, about the uh, construction project soon. As you stated, um, you know the impact on a household, $300,000 house, is $15 a year that will likely help our um, residents feel uh, more confident in the impact on their lives if we have chosen to do this referendum. Um, uh, last thing I wanted to mention to you is uh, we started, BOCI started hosting an equity event, um, some equity series for board members last year. And uh, we were able to attend the one session that they had and they have two sessions coming up this year. One is Tuesday, and none of them this time are on our board meeting nights. Uh, one is Tuesday, December 7th from 5.30 to 8. And the other one is a Friday, January 6th. <laughs> Don't ask me why. Uh, 5.30 to 8. I'll send around an invitation uh, to members who might want to go. They would want no more than two of us to attend, myself plus two board members to attend. And I'll include a little more context to you. Um, in these, we had a guest speaker last time, and in these next ones, it'll be uh, Dr. Sean Douglas. He's a social worker at Uniondale, who was very well known for speaking on issues of equity. And then the one in January is Natalie McGee. She's a CEO of uh, Progression Partners, who work with uh, districts and other organizations around issues of equity. Is it just equity, or, or are they including it under the full diversity, equity, and inclusion? Yeah, that's okay. yeah, complete. And uh, equity, inclusion, and social justice is the name of the first session. So thanks for asking that, Tina. Um, as you probably know, uh, our district has waged forward with a significant investment in DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion, uh, beginning um, almost two years ago. 
and that has included training for our leaders, training for our staff, and training for our students. Um, this is a nice part for board members to participate in some way as well. So I'll send that along and, and you can just let me know if you're interested in attending. And that's it. Sounds oh, and good. I also welcome uh, Jonathan, who is called Jesse Baum, <laughs> our new business administrator. Uh, business administrator. Uh, he has uh, 10 years experience in the work and he's a resident of the district with four children invested in our school district. So uh, he will make a great addition. He'll be joining us in the first, second week in January. And uh, of course, Tammy has generously, genuinely, genu generously agreed uh, to continue through that time and to uh, help us with the transition with Jesse. So we're excited to have him on board. Thank you. We will turn it over to Mr. Amplehart. So I just wanted to publicly thank our curriculum content specialist and our instructional coaches for supporting our professional development day yesterday. We had a full day, professional development day. Um, departments were diving into learning standards. We were able to um, start the therapeutic crisis intervention as for schools, which is TCIS for uh, many of our support staff, um, which is a, usually a four to five day training. Um, so we were at least able to get day one. And so we're trying to build that capacity within our district to do that. Um, and then uh, other uh, kind of standalone sessions as well. We did some APPR, teacher evaluation refreshers. We looked at some, some of the new tricks in Google Classroom and things like that. So. Uh, I'm hoping that folks walked away and I've gotten some feedback that it was worthwhile. And uh, we gave some time for collaboration for grade levels and teams as well. So they were really appreciative around that. Um, going with the behavioral piece, uh, thinking around discipline through a multi-tier system of support is something that I think we need to continue to do. We had a team of folks go to the National PBIS conference um, and they came back with some great ideas around what we can do to continue to build those interventions and supports for students around behavior. So we look forward to uh, learning more about what they learned at that conference. Um, I did want to just say, you know, we don't necessarily sit, mention much about sports, um, but the swimming and diving came in third overall in sectional. So I did want to mention that, which is huge. Um, also, this return to kind of normalcy, we had a lot of candy on campus. <laughs> Thank you to PTO and PTAs for their trunk or treats. It was Dr. Bailey and I and Officer um, Quay were able to do some um, judging and it was really hard because there were such great trunks that were decorated. <laughs> that was at Peter B. And then at Andy B. Becker, I participated as a parent and it was just like my child came home with bags and bags. So. Dentists are probably cringing <laughs> everywhere, but it was, uh, it was great to have those kind of traditions back in, in, in full swing. So, um, Miss Buckley is putting some, now that it's the beginning of the year, is putting some of our future teacher articles back on the website. So keep an eye out. Um, our first future teacher was, is our social worker at the high school, Miss Door. Um, and then also we're, we've been celebrating our artist of the month. So for October, it is um, Rachel Swadier. So check out her work on our website as well. We had 50 students participating in all county. So I just wanted to give a number to that. And then next week, just so Bray knows, 14 high school students participating in NISMA area all state festival. So I'm guessing. One could be yours. I, How many? I'm guessing 14. You have to ask them when wow. you get home. They won't tell me otherwise. Yep. I have, I, I <coughs> make note of that myself. Uh, we also have a wonderful Frozen Junior production coming up from the middle school. So mark your calendars. The, it's the, this coming weekend, the 18th and through the 20th, uh, next weekend. And then the high school drama club is doing their cabaret fundraiser. That is on the 12th. So Will a lot the of exciting. Will play be here though for the middle school? It'll, it'll be the, high, the middle school production of Frozen will be here. here. Yes. Okay. So they were. Is the cabaret November 12th or December 12th? November 12th. Okay. This weekend. This weekend. This weekend. And it's here. And it's here. Um, I didn't well, want to interrupt Dr. Bailey, but our building science pathway did get recently approved. Oh, so good yeah. for us on that. And lastly, if you want to go to Shen this weekend to see the varsity football play section two for us, please. Um, Super Bowl. Bring your ring suit. Oh. <laughs> so we got a lot going on. <laughs> Everyone's got a busy schedule, mm -hmm. and we're all Ubering our children around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's it. Thank you. Yep. We will turn it over to Mrs. Sutherland. Yes, yeah, so just quickly, I want to just provide just some additional information on the electricity bill that the bill, 
bid that the board took action on tonight. So the district is using a consultant firm called USource, and they bring an unbiased independent expertise to the process on energy markets. So the uh, um, RFP is going to include four districts. So Greenville, Carroll, Durham, and Cooksaki Athens have actually been bidding together since 2012. So this is an opportunity for Rubina to join that bid. With, and so it will be a four district bid right now. And they're hoping if they get all the information from the districts that they would go out to bid as early as November 28th that week. So how it is bid is they look at a variety of terms. So they look at 12 month, 24, 36, and 48 months. And that is what you source will do an analysis and they will work and talk with us about what is best for all four districts. And what you really approve today is those terms are good for like a 24 hour period. So you've really given approval for Dr. Bailey to say yes when we look at it, if it's in the best interest of the district. So I just wanted to just give a little share out on that. The fee for use source is not paid by districts. It's actually paid by the winning supplier and it's just part of um, the way they do business with getting a new um, customer. So that's nothing that we're paying to get that expertise. I will say that the other districts, because I know for firsthand, have saved money over these years, so I'm hopeful that that is something that we will see at Ravina. Real quick, I got some updates from Bill on um, the buildings and grounds. The pool, there's not uh, a lot more to share. Again, it's still the long lead items, but he's hopeful that at the beginning of December, we would see completion and final DOA to inspection. And he also gave an update on lighting. I know there's been some concerns that have been spoken about on the lighting. So he does have an electrician coming on site as early as next week to install replacement building mounted fixtures. And they're also gonna be here to troubleshoot the pole lighting in the student lot and address photo cell issues in the new gym lot. And he has new LED fixtures on order for two pole lights at the main entrance to the um, high school middle school camp. Ongoing conversations with architects will be about additional lighting needs, and he knows that there is also multiple lights out at the football field. So um, when time is right for that, he will schedule the lift to come in. He did replace them all. He said in the spring of 2021, he will make sure they're all replaced again. So that's the update from the grounds. Great. I felt bad for whoever was mowing as we came in tonight at 5.30. Because he was dark. on the back field mowing in the dark. <coughs> and there were no lights. No lights on the tractor, no lights overhead. <laughs> Might be a nice pattern in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why I was saying this time. He was mowing the turf field? Ooh, oh, no. Oh, yeah. Am I pointing in the wrong direction? That's not a pattern. Thank you. Well, treasurer's report is for review only. Does anyone have any new business they would like to discuss or add to the agenda? Okay. Old business, nothing to report. Audit finance committee meetings are attached. For the most part, I think we just discussed the external audit. Uh, we don't have any hearings and petitions, upcoming activities. Our next board meeting is December 14th. Uh, which we will have Peter B. Uh, recognition Awards. And I think we don't have any school, right? Friday, yeah. we're off from school Friday. Off from school Friday. So. Okay, that's what I have. Okay. And we put out communication to families in a couple different ways in the last 24 hours, but there is no 10th period tomorrow. There's mm -hmm. Students all go home at 2 05, or they, uh, or they go home uh, at 3 o'clock for elementary. It's a 3 o'clock dismissal for tomorrow. So that's important for our elementary families to remember. Great. Uh, I will need a motion to go to executive session to meet with district council for matters relating to construction, student discipline, appeals, and collective negotiations, and we will not be taking any action when we return. <coughs> I have a motion. Mr. Ross, Mrs. Hotelling, all in favor? Aye. Aye. We're in accept.